everybody and today I am finally filming my finance Q&A. I asked you guys for questions over on Instagram, which you should definitely go follow me at Healy Teaches. Um, and I asked you honestly probably a month ago for these questions and finally I'm now filming it. But I did put up a quick question box today too if you wanted to ask any last minute questions before the video. So I have those as well. And I just want to start this video by saying this is obviously my experience and I'm not saying that what I'm doing is what you have to be doing. This is just a finance Q&A, just answering your questions. If you like some of my ideas, that's great. If not, you obviously don't have to use them or take them too seriously. I do plan on filming more finance related videos, even if it's just incorporating it into my weekly vlogs because it really is such a big part of my life and I feel like you guys really like it whenever I talk about it on Instagram, mostly like on my stories. I will show you like my progress trackers. I do just want to give a really super quick background. So if you didn't know, I'm a first year fifth grade teacher in Massachusetts. I am living with my grandparents right now, so I'm living at home and I don't have any substantial bills other than paying off my student loans. That's obviously going to change my experience with paying off my student loans because I can throw a substantial amount of money at it. Whereas if you're already living in an apartment or you're further into your career or you have kids, or different life circumstances, obviously that's just different and we're not in the same exact position. If you are someone who just recently graduated college and is still living at home, the things that I do are definitely things you can do if you are interested in going that route, but like I said, everyone's different. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing to pay off my student loans and get my finances in order. It's, it's obviously your decision. Let's jump into these questions. Okay. How bad is a teacher's salary really and is it livable? I just have to say, um, obviously teachers are underpaid, but teaching is obviously a full-time job. It's a salary job, so it like is going to be livable. And I know it varies from place to place, and in Massachusetts, I definitely think we have a higher salary as like a first-year teacher than some other states like five years into their career. My salary is definitely livable. I've already kind of like calculated everything for next year where I'm going to be in my own apartment with my boyfriend and I will have plenty of money to cover all like the bills and everything in an apartment as well as like utilities, groceries, gas, and still have some money left over as well as saving $10,000 a year. So it's livable, like it's fine, it's doable. You do have to be disciplined if you want to pay off a substantial amount of loans or save a substantial amount of money. Like I said, I know we're underpaid, but it's livable and it should be livable everywhere. But of course, I'm not like totally knowledgeable about other states, but I know it's livable here. Tips for starting a budget. I am the biggest proponent of using a budget. I honestly don't know, like, this is probably going to come off as so rude, but I honestly don't know how people can go around living life without a budget. Like, I think when people hear the word budget, they think it's this really, like, intricate thing that needs to be, on, like, on an Excel spreadsheet. Very, like, intense and scary. But really, how I used to do my budgets, and I still kind of do it the same way, is I would do it on the Notes app on my phone. And I can show you guys an example. Mine has very few categories right now because my main concerns are paying off my student loans, paying off my car, um, saving up for my car insurance because I pay it yearly. So by May, I need to have like all my money together to pay it off for the year. And then like spending money. So those are my only four categories right now, but next year when I have my apartment and I have other things to account for, it's going to be broken down into more categories. But basically, my tips for starting to budget is literally just use the notes app on your phone or write it down in a notebook, but I just prefer it on my phone because you know that you always have your phone, you can always look at it. What I do is I put out the date that I'm getting paid, the amount of money I expect to be getting in my paycheck, and then I do little check boxes. So for example, so I put 105 to my car, 105 to my car insurance savings, and then 920 to my student loans. I was doing something a little different in the beginning of the school year and I decided to, instead of saving money right now because I already have like a decent amount in my savings account, so instead of saving money while also paying off my student loans, I 
chose to just focus on paying off my student loans so that I could throw more money at them um, and get paid off sooner. Then next school year, I'll start up with saving my 10,000 each year. So right now, those are the three main categories is loans, car, and car insurance. And then whatever is left, which is only about $70, is my spending money. But that also includes gas. If you're someone living at home, you don't need a lot of spending money. It's all in your head. Of course, it's not the best feeling, like knowing, oh, I can't just do whatever I want and like buy a bunch of stuff or go out to eat all the time. It's literally so doable. It's just a mindset, honestly. You just have to get yourself into the mindset that, like, what do you need to spend money on? My loans are all set. My car, like, I'm paying off everything I need to pay off. So at the end of the day, what else do I really need? My whole little quote for the school year has been short-term sacrifice for long-term happiness. So I know that in August, I'm going to be debt-free. I'm not going to have any student loans. I'm not gonna have my car loan. I'm going to be debt free. I don't have any credit card debt to begin with, so that's all set. So to me, it's worth it to not have spending money right now in this moment for this very short year of my life um, in order to be debt free in August and get an apartment with my boyfriend and kind of start life where I wanna be. How do you realistically budget for fast food and shopping? I think I kind of touched upon this a little bit. Basically, that is not a priority for me right now. I just use whatever money I have left over as my free spending money to buy fast food and go shopping. So as of right now, where I am in life, paying off my student loans and my car loan and all that stuff, I just don't prioritize free spending. Next year I will have much more money as free spending and of course I'll enjoy it. I'm not against like having spending money because I love it, but right now I'm just making the sacrifice of just not indulging in that right now just for this short little year so that I can moving forward have more spending money, if that makes sense. Where do you get your tracker templates? So on Instagram, if you follow me, you've probably seen my finance updates, um, and I have on my cork board like these different trackers to color in to show my progress with paying off my loans, my savings, um, and even like my master's program through WGU, I color in the classes as I go. Um, so most of those I actually just made on PowerPoint, but there is a really great website that I also use. This is where I got the Detris one, debtfreecharts.com. So they do have some charts on there that you can purchase for like a dollar or two dollars, but there is a huge selection of free charts that you can just download and print. So these next two questions I'm kind of pairing together because they just went together. The best way to build credit and the best credit card for college students. I was a junior in college when I got my first credit card that I still have now. It is through Discover. I will put my referral link in the description box because if you want to sign up for this card, um, when you sign up with my referral link and make your first purchase down the road, um, you will get $50 and I will get $50 um, as a statement to our credit cards. The reason why I love this card is because you get 5% cash back on certain purchases. So it, it's grouped by quarter. So for like three months, Months, you'll get 5% cash back at right now it's Amazon Walmart and Target which is really great for the holiday season it starts in October and I think it ends this month at the end of December some of the other categories are restaurants usually in the summertime it's restaurants um, gas in like April through June which is a really good one grocery stores in January through March I think that's all the categories but you get 5% cash back on any of those purchases that you use with your credit card and then 1% cash back on all purchases no matter what it is. No matter what credit cards you get, in order to build credit, the only thing you really need to do is only use your credit card for things you already have the money for and you're gonna pay off right away once it goes through to your credit card. For example, I've done this when it was pre-COVID times and Brendan and I were traveling, I would charge both our flights um, our Airbnb, like big purchases on my credit card and get like a decent amount of money back. Um, but we already had the money saved, so we would just pay it off right after. Even little things like gas. If you need to get gas and you have $20 in your debit card, you can just charge it on your credit card and then just pay it off. The only thing that kind of stinks with it is it doesn't process right away. So you have to kind of remember to not touch that money. Um, because it can take like two to three days to actually go through to your credit card and for you to be able to pay it off. And that's something like going into my first credit card, I thought like, okay, it's gonna charge it and then I can just send my money right over. You do have to wait a few days for it to process 
um, and go through. Really inspired by your debt-free journey, but I'm in a lot of debt. Where did you start? I kept track of my debt all throughout college, and I think that's really important if you're someone who is still in school. Obviously, you don't have to make payments on it if you don't have the money. I never really made payments on it in school, which is a great thing to do if you have the means to do that but I wasn't able to, so I just kept an eye on it because a lot of people will graduate school and have no idea how much debt they have, and that's really scary. Um, just knowing it and processing it kind of helps a little bit. So I knew my number at one point was 16,000 something, but then I started my master's program. So WGU, which is the online um, master's program I'm going through right now, is about 3,400 a semester, I believe. Um, just a flat rate, which is amazing. I started by knowing how much debt I had and then making a plan. This is the biggest thing too. Um, some questions coming up, I think, are like, how do you stick to your budget? Um, how do you find the money to pay off loans? That's one. So how do you find the money to pay off loans? That's the thing. You can't just find money to pay off loans. You have to tell your money where to go. So I knew I had $20,000 of student loan debt that I need to pay off and I wanted to pay off in one year. So you have to figure that out. You can't just say, oh, I'll just throw whatever money I have at it. It's not going to happen in one year if you just have no plan. So what I did was I took the amount of loans that I owed and I divided it by 26 paychecks because um, I get paid bi-weekly. There's 52 weeks in a year. So I divided by 26 and that is the number had set to put aside to student loans um, so at the time for me it came out to 650 I want to say or like 640 something so I was taking 650 every two weeks out of my check and putting it straight towards my student loans on the app that I have my loans are through like fed loan or whatever right now my plan has changed a little bit um, since we're since it's so up in the air about possibly some of um, federal loans being forgiven I decided I am putting my money that I would be paying towards my loans into my savings for now because right now since I'm still in school I'm enrolled full-time in a grad program I don't have interest on my loans until I'm done with my program so this is the best time for me to be like paying off my student loans as fast as I can because there's no interest so this is the best time because there's no interest but with not fully knowing if I could possibly get $10,000 forgiven, that made me start putting my loan payments into my savings right now. And it's not affecting me because I don't have any minimum loan payment right now. I'm not in repayment. Like I said, I'm still enrolled in grad school. So this is the best option for me because say down the road, um, it does happen. I would be so mad that I just threw $10,000 away essentially. And then if it doesn't happen, come August, I'm just going to put all the money that's in my savings that I've been saving for my loans and just throw it at my loans and pay it off. I'm pretty flexible with my plans. As I just explained, I kind of had to um, switch it up just because of current events right now. Besides getting an apartment, are there any big purchases you want to make when you're debt free? Hmm, honestly, I haven't really thought about this. Oh, one thing I do want to get down the road, I'm not sure if it's going to be like next year, probably won't be, um, because I definitely am the type of person that's going to like save up cash for any big purchases. Probably LASIK because my eyesight is just not it and I obviously have contacts in and I have glasses as well, but um, just being able to like wake up and see without having to put contacts in or glasses on, that would be just like... I feel like my life would be complete. Definitely LASIK is something I want to look into as like a big purchase for myself, but I can't think of anything, any like physical items. Do you have a finance plan? So funny story, it's, it's literally not funny at all, but I have a note on my Google Keep app, that's like my notes app, um, that is called budget plan. So finance plan basically. Um, and I mapped this out my senior year of college as like each year that I'm teaching and how much I plan on making roughly because I didn't know at the time so it says first year 2020 to 2021 and then the I guessed how much I would be making each paycheck like so bi-weekly so it's about a thousand two hundred and then I put my main focus and my second focus so my main focus is my debt this year which I put debt $20,000 and how much a check I'll be sending towards my debt to pay that off 
And then my second focus was paying off my car, which I only had at the beginning of the school year, um, 2500 left on it, and I put 105 a check. So by June, that'll be paid off. And then I also had my car insurance to think about, so I put 105 a check for 15 weeks. So after the 15 weeks, I'll be able to throw that money also to my loan. I don't know if you can see that, but that is like my little plan. So that is the first year I'm teaching, and then I have the second year, which is next year. I just have a general outline for years three through five. Then my savings goal after five years is $50,000. My savings goal after 10 years is $100,000 because I'm saving $10,000 a year. My reasoning for that number is that I will have $50,000 for my half of a down payment, which is like a really good down payment on a house. And then I'll just have $50,000 sitting in my savings collecting interest. So that is my finance plan, like my long-term overall life finance plan. Once I get to, you know, after my fifth year of teaching, I'll of course reevaluate. And I reevaluate as time goes on. Like, this isn't like set in stone or anything. Um, but this is a really good outline for me, and I just liked how it turned out. Best suggestions to start saving slash managing your money better. I want to start a new video, I think. I want to do a bunch of like finance advice videos. Um, one on my experience and just one on general tips on how to, you know, pay off a substantial amount of loans or save a substantial amount of money. So I think I'm going to end the video here. I have literally been rambling for so long. I don't know how I'm going to cut down this video to a decent length. But thank you so much for asking these questions. There was a few I didn't even get to because I've been talking for way too long. Like I said, I'm going to be making a lot more finance related videos. So definitely hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my teaching relating videos as well as my finance videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.